The Jacobi Medallion represents Mount Sinai's long and rich tradition of excellence. For seven decades, Mount Sinai has been awarding the medallion, each year honoring alumni, faculty, and administrators for their distinguished achievements. This year's honorees include Mount Sinai's lead grants and contracts officer, who has overseen the school's tremendous growth in research funding. The director of the Tisch Cancer Institute, who is a renowned cancer researcher. The chief of gastroenterology, who is highly regarded for his treatment of complex inflammatory bowel disease. And a great researcher and mentor, who is a world leader in the pathology of liver disease. These Jacopi recipients are exceptional physicians, visionary researchers, great educators, and talented administrators. They have worked to expand our understanding of the biomedicine and ensure young physicians know how to apply that knowledge to heal their patients. They embody the aspiration of Mount Sinai to advance science and medicine in the name of better and more effective healthcare. Congratulations to the 2023 Jacobi Medallion recipients. scientist but I'm a total science nerd and I love research and so when I was offered the position in the grants and contracts office it was just my dream job. I was amazed that I was given the opportunity. We have some of the most brilliant minds at Sinai. I'm so grateful to work with just amazing wonderful researchers and see what they do and how that impacts our everyday lives. We're helping to enable researchers to discover the way that allows them to get what they need and the application you submit today could save your life in a couple decades. Jessica's work is crucial to the processing of Icon Mount Sinai's institutional funding sources. As grants and contracts officer, she signs off on the sponsored programs that support so many of our important research initiatives. Jessica's stewardship through the complexities of our prodigious growth and the rapidly changing scope of our research capabilities cannot be overstated. I think backbone would be a perfect word to describe Jessica's role in the research enterprise here at Mount Sinai. Jessica's role is essential. My research focuses on studying how we can strengthen the human immune system against viruses. She is the intersection for every one of us to obtain NIH grants. So she is literally essential for all of us obtaining grant money. Research is expensive. The amount of research that an institution could do without sponsored programs funding is very tiny. Without sponsored programs, you can't have a real research portfolio. And without a real research portfolio, there are no advances in science. I did a medical degree, a PhD, a residency. I mean, I did all the school you can do. And then you're starting your research group and how do I get funded? What's the process? She knows her craft better than anyone, and that's evident to anyone who works with her. Jessica is a true problem solver. She knows where the bottlenecks are, where the possible hiccups are located, and she knows how to address this. I am able to provide that guidance around the regulations. An understanding of nuance and gray areas and wiggle room. I am learning the new rules to really understand complicated and at times contradictory information and be able to synthesize it in a way that's meaningful to a scientist who just wants to do his or her science and cure something, which at the end of the day is what's really important. With the grant money that I receive, we can look at long-lasting immunity against influenza or COVID. Without money, none of those things would be possible. When I found out that I got the Jacoby Award, I was really speechless. Our role is very behind the scenes. It's a validation of, of what we do and that we really are important to the researchers. To participate in the way that I participate in so many just miraculous medical breakthroughs, to be a part of that, it's very rewarding. I'm so blessed. I want to live in a world where there are advances in medicine. What excites me about understanding cancer is that the causes of the disease 
are so varied. We're always discovering a new piece of the puzzle, and it's always a different puzzle we're figuring out. Because as technology is advancing, we have a much more sophisticated appreciation of the disease. And now it's more about what do we do about it, right? And how do we take advantage of this information to help people? Ramon has been an inspirational leader of our Tisch Cancer Institute. In addition, Ramon is an extraordinary researcher in cancer genetics and breast cancer in particular. His monumental discovery of a tumor suppressor gene that is often mutated in cancer was a critical breakthrough that has influenced the world's understanding of cancer and other diseases. Ramon is dedicated to identifying what causes normal cells to develop into cancer cells, an outcome that can result in new treatments for multiple cancers. Dr. Parsons worked on one of the major discoveries in colon cancer, and that is the basis for Lynch syndrome. He continued his research as an independent investigator and again became involved in a discovery of a gene that turns out to be one of the most frequently mutated cancer genes ever found. These are mind-bogglingly important discoveries. What is amazing to me is that he's not only been able to continue his research, but he's been able to take on building the cancer program here at Mount Sinai. Taking the helm as director of Tisch Cancer Institute was super exciting for me. I really wanted to focus on trying to become a comprehensive cancer center, meaning we have really strong basic research, we have really strong clinical research, and we have really strong population health research. Under Dr. Parsons, our immunotherapy program and cancer vaccine program has become world-class under his support and with his enthusiasm. He has an extended cancer genetics beyond the laboratory, for example, in Harlem, where there's a higher rate of prostate cancer. And can we understand why that's the case and what are the genetic differences that might result in those higher rates? Now is the time for patients with cancer to be helpful. There are so many different options that are available that were not available two years ago, four years ago, 10 years ago. I think that the momentum is not gonna be abating anytime soon. Honoring Dr. Parsons with the Jacoby Medallion, we are honoring one of the most distinguished faculty at Mount Sinai who has made in short 10 years enormous contributions taking our Tisch Cancer Institute to a national prominence. I just couldn't think of anybody more deserving of this award. I'm really humbled and honored to be a recipient because it tells me that my peers feel like I've had an impact here. By helping scientists be successful at the Tisch Cancer Institute, I feel like I am helping the greater mission to try to beat cancer. I think I have the best job in the world as division chief in gastroenterology at Mount Sinai. I get to do all the things that I love, whether it's seeing patients or doing research or teaching or being a leader. And that's really what drives me day to day. The reason I wanted to come to Mount Sinai is really I saw a place with incredible history in GI, starting with the discovery of Crohn's disease, but I saw the potential for so much more our quest is to end this disease. Bruce, as one of the world's experts in gastrointestinal disease, possesses great command of both clinical research and patient care. He is widely recognized for his innovative treatment of Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, and for his expertise in the investigation of new therapeutics. He is also proficient in the management of inflammatory bowel diseases and has earned an international reputation for his care of patients with complex and refractory disease. When I came here to be chief of the division of gastroenterology, my vision was to build a division that was highly academic and that the world recognized as being among the top in the world for all things related to gastroenterology care. He grew the division to heights that anybody 10 years ago would never have predicted. He built the IBD Center, which is a wraparound, comprehensive center for patients with inflammatory bowel disease that's unrivaled in the country. The idea 
that we would have this continuity from pediatric onset through that transition to adult care all in one location to me is visionary. I think the IBD Center at Mount Sinai has changed the paradigm of care targeting what they need. Do they need nutritional support? Do they need psychological support or social support? Whatever it is that they need, we evaluate it, figure out what that is, and we provide it to them. And we can do that all under one roof, married very importantly with research to bring the field forward. That's what's really unique about the place. I think to be a leader, it's someone that people want to follow. Why would you come here? You come here for Bruce. The impact of Bruce's work can be seen by the fact that many top physicians and scientists want to come here to work at Mount Sinai. He recruited Judy Cho, who cloned the first Crohn's gene. He recruited John Fred Columbell, France's top IBD doctor. It's because of him I'm here. When I first heard that I won the Jacoby Medallion, I was first very surprised and then felt very honored because I understand the significance of this for the Mount Sinai community. He sets the barometer of the gold standard of what it means to have the trifecta of a clinician first, amazing researcher, and amazing educator. My biggest source of pride is the division that has been built here. For IBD and many other conditions in gastroenterology, we really are not going to stop until we find the answers of how to treat these diseases, how to end them, really, to cure them. That's really the goal. I've been at Mount Sinai for 45 years. I was trained under the visionary leader, Dr. Hans Popper. He's the father of uh, hepatology. There are many diseases that affect the liver. Everything affects the liver. So being a liver pathologist is like being a detective. Just by looking at the liver specimen, the liver biopsy, you can tell the story of the patient. Here they call me uh, Sherlock Holmes. I think I'm more Miss Marple. Swung is a founding member of the Mount Sinai Liver Cancer Research Program. She was part of the team that launched our Liver Pathology Division and the Liver Pathology Fellowship that began under her direction and is believed to be one of the only of its kind anywhere. Without question, Swan's contributions to the study of liver pathology, immunopathology, and liver cancer have been recognized the world over, and so deservedly so. Dr. Thung took this torch that was handed to her by Dr. Popper years back and has developed her division of liver pathology and really the entire Mount Sinai liver diseases effort into an internationally acclaimed program that draws patients and researchers from around the world who come here to learn under Dr. Thung's guidance. My vision was to train as many people that are interested in liver pathology to become great liver pathologists. Not as good as me, but better than me. Being trained by Swan Thong is tantamount to wearing a badge of success. So many of her graduates of the Liver Pathology Fellowship Program are now heads of their departments and the division chiefs and major researchers throughout the world. She inspires everyone that she comes in contact with. Collaboration is the culture that she has developed, not just within her division of liver pathology, but with the, the medical team in the division of liver diseases, the surgeons, that's what leadership is all about. Mount Sinai means a lot to me. Most of my life I spent at Mount Sinai. It's my second home. So receiving the Jacobi Medallion Award is such a great honor for me. By honoring Dr. Swan Thung with the Jacobi Medallion, we're honoring a woman who has dedicated a lifetime to the pursuit of excellence in liver pathology and as a result allowed Mount Sinai to develop into the largest liver cancer program in the United States. When history looks back, they will write about Dr. Swan Thong as a trailblazer, training generations of liver pathologists throughout the world. My husband is already bribing me to retire, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking forward that I will be able to identify and mentor great liver pathologists for the future 
to carry the legacy.